Hi, welcome to the second part of the CT scanner series video. If you have not watched the first part of this series, I request that you please watch the first part first. In this video, we will look into types of detectors, types of CT scanners, and the applications. Let's begin with types of detectors. First is a xenon gas detector. Pressurized xenon gas fills a hollow chamber to produce detectors that absorb approximately 60 to 87% of the photons that reach them. Xenon gas is used because of its ability to remain stable under pressure. Xenon gas is significantly less expensive compared with the solid state variety. It is also somewhat easier to calibrate and is highly stable. A xenon detector channel consists of three tungsten plates. When a photon enters the channel, it ionizes the xenon gas. These ions are accelerated and amplified by the electric field between the plates. The collection charge produces an electric current. This current is then processed as raw data. A disadvantage of xenon gas is that it must be kept under pressure in a certain extent. Loss of X-ray photons in the casing window and the space taken up by the plates are the major factors hampering detector efficiency. Second is a solid-state crystal detector. Solid-state detectors are also called scintillation detectors because they use a crystal that fluoresces when struck by an X-ray photon. A photodiode is attached to the crystal and transforms the light energy into electrical or analog energy. The individual detector elements are affixed to a circuit board. Solid-state crystal detectors have been made from a variety of materials, including cadmium tungstate, bismuth germinate, cesium iodide, and ceramic rare earth compounds such as gadolinium or yttrium. Because these solids have high atomic numbers and high density in comparison to gases, solid-state detectors have higher absorption coefficients. They absorb nearly 100% of the photons that reach them. Types of CT scanners First, we will look into multi-slice CT machines. There are several different types of CT machines depending on the amount of slices. Multi-slice scanners come in 4, 6, 8, 16, 32, 40, and 64 slice configurations. Additional slices enhance diagnostic capabilities and broaden the range of applications, especially if the facility will be performing cardiac studies. Two, four, six, or eight slice CT machines are all whole body scanners capable of a scan outline 0.8 to 0.5 second full 300 degree rotation scans while acquiring multiple slices in a single rotation. These models are perfect for mid to high volume locations and will provide fast scanning and excellent image quality. 16 slice CT machines can perform a wide variety of sophisticated and complex imaging procedures. It provides full organ coverage with high resolution imaging, but is not considered adequate for detailed cardiac analysis such as coronary vessel analysis. 32 to 40 slice CT machines generally feature shorter examination times than the 16 slice, with reduced likelihood of motion artifacts. 64 slice CT machines are said to have significantly improved CT angiography, CTA, and are particularly recommended for cardiac studies. The speed and sensitivity of these CT machines allow physicians to see how well the heart is contracting to view the walls of arteries for plaque formation, and to observe the tiniest of vessels and arterial branches. They can produce exceptionally sharp images of the finest details and significantly reduce scan time. The second type of CT scanner is single-slice CT machines. Single-slice CT machines are capable of acquiring one image per gantry rotation. The gantry is the ring the patient is placed in. A scanner with more slices allows faster acquisition. For example, a multi-slice would make it easier to examine unruly children or weak elderly patients that can't lie still for too long. While multi-slice CT machines have become the industry norm, the single-slice machines are still useful components and should continue to be around for quite some time. The third type of CT scanner is the mobile CT machine. It's important to note that CT machines are capable of going mobile. This is useful for many situations, especially if you'd rather not make a commitment. For example, if your current CT suite is under repair or renovations, you may want to rent a mobile CT machine. 
perhaps to have lower patient volume at several locations. In this case, you could transport a mobile CT scanner for specific intervals of time to each location when needed, rather than investing in several types of CT machines. Let's look into different kinds of CT scans. CT angiography. A doctor might order a CT angiography or angiogram if they want to assess a person's risk of heart disease. The scan can also help doctors detect damage to the blood vessels such as aneurysms or blockages. Before the scan, a health professional injects dye into the blood vessels to help make the flow of blood through the body more visible. A CT technologist then takes images of the blood vessels. CT abdomen scan. During an abdominal CT scan, a technologist will capture images of the organs of the digestive tract, such as the intestines, colon, liver, spleen, and appendix. A doctor might order an abdomen scan to detect abscesses in the area, to discover internal bleeding, or to identify and diagnose tumors, such as those in the colon. CT Bone Scan While an X-ray can detect a fracture or other problem with the bones, healthcare professionals also sometimes use a CT scan of the bones. Since a CT scan can give more information to a doctor, they might order one if the results of a traditional X-ray are inconclusive. A CT bone scan will also provide a clearer picture of the soft tissues near the bones, such as the tendons and muscles. A CT bone scan might also help diagnose cancer in the bones. Head CT A doctor might order a head CT for a patient who is experiencing unexplained headaches or dizziness. The procedure can also help diagnose brain tumors or strokes. A head CT captures images of the brain and other areas of the head, such as the sinuses. Patients with ongoing sinus issues might benefit from a head CT to determine if there is ongoing inflammation in the area. CT scan chest and lungs. A CT scan of the chest can provide a doctor with detailed images of a person's lungs. Doctors might order the scan if a patient complains of having trouble breathing or of having chest pain. The images can help doctors diagnose conditions such as lung cancer, pneumonia, tuberculosis, or excess fluid in the lungs. Cardiac CT. A cardiac CT scan also takes pictures of the chest area. However, the focus is not on the lungs, but on a person's heart. A doctor might order a cardiac CT to detect problems with the aorta, heart valves, and other arteries. In some cases, a doctor might order a cardiac CT scan to follow up on the results of a procedure, such as a coronary artery bypass grafting. CT Neck a CT scan of the neck typically captures images of the area of the base of the skull to the top of the lungs. The scan can detect and diagnose tumors or masses in the neck, on the tongue, on the vocal cords, or in the upper airway. A doctor can also detect growths or abnormalities on the thyroid gland or issues with the carotid artery using a neck CT scan. Pelvic CT scan A pelvic CT will take pictures of the area inside the body between the hip bones. It can help diagnose issues with the male or female reproductive systems or to identify bladder problems such as bladder stones or tumors. CT scan kidneys. A common reason for a CT scan of the kidneys is to detect and confirm the presence of kidney stones. The scan can also help identify tumors, abscesses, and signs of kidney disease. CT scan of the spine. Spinal CT scans capture images of the bony spinal structure, the discs between the bones and the soft tissue of the spinal column. A CT scan of the spine can help a doctor assess injury to the area, diagnose herniated discs, and evaluate the area before surgery. In some cases, a doctor might use a spinal CT to gauge bone loss in the area as a result of osteoporosis. A CT scan of the spine can also be an aid during a biopsy or other procedure. Hope you learned about the basics of CT scanners watching this series of videos. If you did like this video, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe down below. I'll see you guys in the next video.